Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for Simpo Gear Season 2, Episode 1. I believe this one's called G, uh, like the season name, so uh, if that's considered the se Either way, <laughs> before I make myself sound stupid, Season 2, Episode 1. I'm excited, guys. Last season, cranked. I, you know, just didn't think much of the show going into it. I've said it many times, but ended up loving it. Honestly... From the first episode, it wasn't bad and, and everything. Like, we were getting into the world, and, and I was interested in the lore. And the lore just kept on coming. It wasn't something where we got some lore in the the first couple episodes, and then it just turned into a battle anime, right? Like, it, it kept going. It's awesome. So, yeah, we had Fine get thanos dusted. Uh, she is no longer, for now, uh, obviously, she can be awoken in you know, descendants and stuff like that, but, uh, but yeah, uh, we had an epic fight against her, she tried to bring down the moon, we had an amazing song by the three girls, and they, uh, they managed to destroy the fragment, save everyone, uh, but they had to pretend they were dead for a, a bit of time until some political drama, uh, kind of went, uh, went past, went long enough that they can they can now seemingly be back and they revealed themselves to Miku at the very end. So yeah, I wonder where we're gonna go this season. I have no idea. Uh the only hint I really have is they talked about these like gates of Babylon that are spewing out the noise. Could we try to find that to like close it to stop the noise permanently kind of thing? Uh there there was also the mention of this him fellow that uh that Fine was in love with and could never reach and seemingly like a god entity, uh at least the way she spoke of him. She was his priestess and stuff like that. So maybe we get something with that, although I feel like that'd be like a a show ender kind of thing, right? Like uh like what's what's higher than God, but who knows. So I'm I'm excited to see whatever they pull out for this season. Let's get started with this episode, shall we? Uh, we're going to start here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. Oh. Oh. What is this? Who is that? I don't know who these people are. Oh, did she do her superb song? Oh, did that land on them? What a wild start. Okay. I don't know what I just saw, but I'm sure it will be explained someday. We're just getting back-to-back -back music. Oh, is this an opening? This is not an opening. <laughs> this is a fight. Pretty good song. Oh, jeez. Are we following different people in this one? Oh. <laughs> No, we're not. <laughs> Is it this girl singing? Uh. 
Oh, our boy, he's back and seems to be in good health again. Solomon's cane, okay. The Sakurai theory. Okay. <laughs> we don't have time for this. Oh. <laughs> the animation seems a little better, right? Or not... I liked First Season's animation, but it seems a little bit more, like, floaty. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Her facial animation has changed a lot more real quickly than I feel they like normally do. All right. Somewhat new transformation sequence. It's still similar, but... Different background anyway, right? Just <laughs> bust it out. Ever heard of doors? All right. Ooh, nice. That was cool. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's cool. Jeez. Damn, Chris, you're always so good with that AoE. Giga Zeppelin. <laughs> Mega Death Party. We've seen that before. Oh, I love anime. Not for that reason. <laughs> I said that at the worst possible time. <laughs> uh, my girl, when she punches. Okay. Yeah, because they're in possession of Solomon's cane, so. We keep seeing this girl singing, right? Maybe she doesn't even know she's doing it. Oh no! <laughs> nice. Ha 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 ha. 
<laughs> His combat catalog is a bunch of action movies. All right. What? Just phase through him? Oh, that's different. Whoa! All right. Cool. They changed that up a bit. That's awesome. She's got rocket boosters on her arms now. Maybe you should watch some of those action movies, Chris. Instead of judging them. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> ah, no, no. We're not, we're not heroes. <laughs> This guy has a design that he could go, like, evil scientist, especially with that face. I hope not. But I could see him making that face he just made and turn evil on us someday. American flag, huh? With the Japanese flag. Is that like the American Embassy or something? Or just a teamwork effort kind of stuff? Oh shit! Another one! <laughs> Good god. It looks more digital, doesn't it? Than normal. They're definitely really there, though. Jeez, those guys. Just gone. Hmm. Who are you? Is she the person from the very beginning? Mum. Uh, well. End of the world. Mom. Well, shit. They just did all that work to transfer Solomon's cane and it's gone now. And the... That was the guy with white hair, right? That doctor. The thing is, is did he orchestrate it? Hmm. Hey, there's Subasa. All right.
All right. Let's do us a concert. So is she following up that uh, that first girl? Are they in the same spot? Is this mom? Well, not pulling any punches. These girls. Oh, Miku's there. Nice. <laughs> okay, so everyone else knows she's alive, too. Not just Miku. Oh, are they both together? Interesting. Ready, go! Interesting. So are they... What would be the... I don't think it'd be considered a band, would it? Without, like, instruments and stuff like that. I don't know. Are they just doing this as an event, singing together, or is she kind of like the the new Kanade, right? Where they're like a two person team, like like Zwei Wing was, right? Or is this just a one time thing they're doing together? Good song though. Good song. Yeah. That's cool. Very flashy. Where do they get these feathers? <laughs> it's all over the country, huh? <laughs> it's so funny thinking about like a bunch of dudes just Oh it's so good. Okay, so they're not like a team right now. They just, they did this event together. The power to end the world. Uh-oh. Oh, 
Oh my god, another concert just getting attacked. Alright, Subasa. No time to hesitate, into action. What? Hmm. <laughs> that girl, I was always... This isn't an anime. See, those noise look like they're... They look like a shitty VHS tape. But usually the noise aren't like that. It's almost like they're holograms or projections or of some sort or something. Probably. Oh, they're a little bit more solid there. Hmm. Jeez. <clears throat> Just... Yeah. I own the world now. Uh, this sounds like a, a transformation. Yep. What is she wielding? Gungnir? What? I guess... They only have a fragment, right? Which means there's more of the relic out there, which I guess it makes sense that someone else would be able to use it too. We have an evil Hibiki now. What? Oh my god. She never goes away. <laughs> well, shit. So are they people that kind of follow Fine's ideology? Hmm. I just realized I have like a cut on my knuckle and I don't know how I got it. Oh, that was a good first episode, guys. We immediately, I thought we were going to get like, you know, kind of like a get back into the story kind of first episode. And and then maybe the second episode, we'd start seeing like hints of what like, like big bads for the season kind of thing. But interesting.
And we will let these credits roll out, make sure that there is nothing after, even though there wasn't much after before. Take a sip of water. I started up my, uh, my diet again. If you guys have watched any of my older videos, I went on a diet for a while, for roughly a year. Oh, well, that fell out. Um, oh, shoot. Well, I was going to talk to him. Oh, there is a little bit. A few seconds. Oh, just that. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, guys. That is it for episode one of season two. I guess just to finish what I was saying, I'll, I'll make it quick. Uh, if you watch some of my older videos, I I dieted for about a year, lost a decent amount of weight. I lost like 60 pounds-ish, and, uh, and then I fell off the wagon and put a bunch of that weight back on, probably, if not all of it, close to all of it, or maybe more. I haven't weighed myself yet. I really should. I'm just kind of scared to. Because I don't, I don't want it to be more than I was before. But either way, I, I've been wanting to get back in the dieting, like, train for a while now. Um, and finally, I, it's kind of embarrassing, but the catalyst for it was, I went out to dinner with my family, and they stuck us in, uh, in a booth, which we haven't been in, like, one of the little, you know, where they, they have, like, the benches that you sit on, and then the tables there uh in a restaurant and i haven't been in one of those for a while a lot of the other times we've gone out to dinner we've been placed at like tables with chairs and stuff but i could barely fit in that thing like my back was against the back of it and my belly was touching the table and i'm not like the the crazy thing is is i'm not even that big of a dude like i'm i'm fat don't get me wrong i'm definitely on the obese scale but I'm not, like, wheelchair can't move, you know? I can walk around, I can move around, you know? I'm not, like, I'm not massive, like, my stomach doesn't go out like this, you know? It's, uh, so I can't believe I couldn't fit well, but it also doesn't help that I'm 6'5", as well, so my legs under the table, like, feet flat, pushed out even a little bit, angled, so my legs were a little bit lower, were still jam-packed against the, uh, against the table, and I was so uncomfortable, and it was so embarrassing, I just, I, I need to lose that, that weight again, and I've been wanting to, so that was kind of like the catalyst, so I came up with a good plan, because exercising is really hard for me, and like the, the middle of the day, I find like a hard time building up the motivation to go and do it, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wake up and right when I wake up, I'm going to do my morning routine, and part of that morning routine is going to be my exercising. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I just figured I'd share it with you guys, because maybe if I, if I can stick with it, and if I can make good progress on it, I might make some update videos on my channel and, and stuff like that in regards to it. So, um, but yeah. Okay, sorry about that. That went on way longer than I planned for talking about it, but uh, Simpo Gear. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Uh, great first episode, like I said, we kind of, we, we dived right into it. It was crazy. We got this, you know, they call themselves Fine, the end. It seems like maybe a group that if, I don't know how, what kind of ties they had to Fine of last season, whether they're just like cultists kind of like following her ideology or if they actually had any contact with her. Like, did they did they speak to her? Did she, like, train them in her ways kind of thing? Or is it just, like, them trying to copy what she did kind of thing? But, uh... But, yeah, they seemingly... I imagine that's the group that stole Solomon's cane and took the, the doctor guy as well. I have my theories and reservations about the doctor guy because he looks like he could very easily be a bad guy. So whether he was in on it or if he is just innocent and, and taken, we'll see what's going on there. We have the woman that the that uh, Mar Maria, right, called mom. I should write down Maria. Let's write that down. Okay. Um, and... Yeah, so she called her mom. She badass looking older lady with an eye patch. So, 
I, I, I do wonder, and they talked about, like, finally you arrived kind of thing. I wonder who she was talking about in regards to that. Uh, we had two other people in, uh, with, like, glowing stuff on their chest, which could be a relic as well. So, uh, yeah, Maria's wielding Gungnir. I don't know if she has another fragment or if she has, like, the completed relic. Because it's not that Hibiki doesn't have a fragment. I always, like, mess that up. It's a piece of armor that came off of, uh... What's her name? Came off of Kanade and plunged into her, into the wound that she got back then. Uh, that's how Hibiki is able to wield it, and now it's starting to, like, fuse with her body, right? Which means the relic is still out there. I imagine Kanade died with... I don't know what happened if there was, like, a fragment there. Basically, I'm curious if if fragments are out there, does that mean you can't have a complete one? Because that means there's still a fragment out there? Like, uh... Shoot, I'm not going to be able to remember the the name of Subasa's. I apologize, but Subasa's relic, she has a fragment. So that means there can't be a complete relic out there because she still has a fragment of it, right? Is that how it works? Or can there still be one and it's like 99% of it and that's enough to be considered complete? I don't know. We'll learn more as we go. But either, yeah, she has a fragment or she has the rest of it or or however that works, but... Yeah, she's straight up just like an, an evil Hibiki now that we're that we're gonna have to beat. Uh and I don't know I don't know if this one's gonna take the path of Chris, right? Where we where we redeem her and bring her to our side. I mean, maybe Hibiki did it with Chris, maybe she'll try to do it again, kind of thing. Uh but they they seemingly just declared war on the world in a in a televised broadcast that is being sent to every other country, she said that, you know, we control the noise and now we control the world. So it's going to be interesting having having this come about. She just hit the charts on the U.S., so I wonder if she is any nation backing her in this. Like, are, are the damn Americans backing her? Or is... Is she just on her own? Is, like, America not gonna like this either and help fight against it kind of thing? It's, uh, pretty crazy. Oh, I don't think I finished saying, uh, the other two people we saw there seem to have... I imagine those are relics, too, so I imagine they have their own, um, transformations and everything, which means we're gonna have potentially three people with transformations going against our three characters, Subasa, Chris, and Hibiki. So... That makes, that makes sense from a TV show standpoint to have, like, you know, equal number fight kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, the music this episode was great. We had a lot of it. A lot of music. So, uh, and that, I guess to talk about that beginning sequence a little bit, like, I, I don't really know what to make of that. Either that's, like... I don't even know whether that's a past or a future that we're, like, gonna see. But... I, I certainly think it could be, like, a past, and it could be, like, a a tragic history of Maria, potentially. It was really hard to, like... I'm, I'm really bad at telling faces in anime, especially when they take away, like, the color and stuff like that. Like, and the hairstyle's obviously different than what she had it in now, so, like... Honestly, I it's crazy how much with like anime characters I rely on their hairstyle and color to be like okay that's who and obviously like eye color too and stuff like that um, to be like oh yes that's obviously that character but when we had a grayscale image of of what was going on for the most part uh, it's it's hard to tell whether one of those people were Maria or not but. You know, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm leaving the option open that is, but it's a question of is it something that's going to happen or is it something that's already happened, right? Maybe that, maybe it's what pushed Maria to go down the path that she's at now is, is something tragic and, and maybe that means that it's something that could be overcome and, and she could come to our side, but we'll see. Uh, it's a really minor detail, but I really liked the digital stamp that they had this episode. Because I've always loved, like, I love, like, the old, olden days stuff where they, where they have their own seal, right? And they, like, melt some candle wax and pour it on the letter and then stamp their seal onto it. Like, 
I always think that's like the coolest thing. And I, that's kind of what we had here, similar, just a more digital future version of it. Like, I wish we could have that shit. Like, I want my own seal. And I want to be able to, like, go and, like, anytime I have to sign a document, like, I go to a dentist and I have to sign something, you know, just give me that seal and I can stamp it, make it digital, make it whatever. I don't care. I just want, I just want a stamp to represent myself. But no, I gotta sign my damn name in frickin' cursive. Like, no one uses that shit anymore. <laughs> uh, it was just really cool. Uh, we did get a name of something that I don't think we see, someone or something we haven't seen yet, Sacrist S. So I wonder what that's going to be, or who it's going to be, or what. But I wrote it down. It's there. We'll find out, I guess. But uh, they spoke about the end of the world. Not just not them taking over the world. They want the end of the world, right? I guess it makes sense if they're trying to control the noise in order to take over all the countries and take control. It could be that they're trying to do what Fine was trying to do with uniting everyone, right? She had her, like... They had their messed up ways of doing it, but this could just be another messed up way of trying to unite the world kind of thing. Because I didn't... I sense that there's a deeper level of Maria where I don't know that she just wants to murder everyone, right? Like, just pure evil. I I feel like there's a purpose behind that because she said... Uh, she had a line in there. I can't remember exactly what she said... But it seemed like if only the whole world could be like that, it would be a much better place or something like that along those lines, she said. So I, I definitely think there's some wiggle room in there for Maria to maybe have some noble causes, but going the wrong way doing it. Or it also could be another Chris situation where she's being manipulated. Like what if, what if mom over here or the sacrist S person has a much more nefarious plan and they're using them and using their, like, you know, noble goals, assuming they have them. I'm just making assumptions here in order to control them and manipulate what they do. And then it'd be another Chris and Fine situation kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, I am super curious to see where the season goes. I, I loved it. Animation definitely feels like it went up a notch. The fighting animation Seems like it went up a notch. That that fight sequence in the beginning was great. Um, I loved even just like Chris's facial animation. You know, like the the way she like changed from like a like a a pouty to like a sad looking face kind of thing. Like the the transition of her facial expressions was real good too and adorable. So, but uh, but yeah. Uh, what did I? Oh, action movies. I forgot. I have that written down. I had a hard time reading my own writing, so I didn't talk about it yet because I was like, "What does that say?" This is action movies. I love that uh, that Genjiro's combat catalog is just action movie shit. <laughs> That's so great. Just like we're just gonna see like one of these days, we're just gonna see Hibiki pull out some like Jackie Chan moves or something like that because she's just watching all these action movies. And I love that she's just like, I love that Chris bashes it. She's like, aren't they just action movies? But then she uses something that she saw from that catalog to de, you know, get one of the train uh, carts separated and use that to her advantage. And then Chris is like, oh, she did this, this, and that. And it impressed me. Like, you never cease to amaze me kind of thing. And it was like, yeah, you need to start watching those. Get, get you some action movies with all your, like, guns and missiles and everything. Like, maybe you'll get some ideas, right? Uh, go watch some Austin Powers with their laser sharks. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. I had fun with it. I'm enjoying it, so... I'm sure it will get even better as we learn more about, uh... This Fine group and everything. Now... It's going to be awkward referring to them as Fine as a collective when we had a character also named Fine earlier, but we'll manage. I'm sure I'll just have to over-explain everything like I always do. So thank you guys so much. I think that will be it for me. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this first episode. Check out my Patreon. If you're watching this on YouTube, that means you can see the rest of Simpo Gear on my Patreon right now by supporting me on there. The link is in the description or should be popping up on the screen. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.